Hi, welcome to the Roundtable. I'm your host, Sandy Powell, and tonight I have a fabulous show, uh, a bunch of brave women who have uh, been through war and back, and uh, it is in domestic violence that I'm speaking. Uh, today I have with me uh, sisters in Christ, my own mother, and my own daughter. And today we're going to touch on the topic of domestic violence and, and why it is prevalent in uh, this month. It is Awareness Month, and we're going to highlight women and men, because sometimes we think it's just women, but it's men as well, uh, that experience domestic violence. And we're going to speak on that subject today. So welcome, everybody, to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for being here today. I want to say in advance, thank you for sharing what you're about to share. I know it's not an easy thing. Uh, I always say the survivors have a story to tell, and so I thank each and every one of you for being willing to come on and talk about your experiences. Uh, I wanted to just touch on a little bit, though, uh, before we got started. I wanted to read uh, this little paragraph of domestic violence and the description of what domestic violence is. It's, uh, it is destructive for both the battered and the batterer. It is tendency to be passed down over generations, makes it all the more important that we develop effective methods for combating abusive behavior. Domestic violence can be physical or psychological, and it can also affect anyone of any age, gender, race, or sexual orientation. It may also include behaviors meant to scare, physically harm, or control a partner. While every relationship is different, domestic violence generally involves an unequal power dynamic in which one partner tries to assert control over the other in various ways. Examples include insults, threats, emotional abuse, sexual coercion. Some predators may even use children, pets, or other family members as emotional leverage to get the victim to do what they want. And victim experience diminished self-worth, anxiety, depression, and a general sense of helplessness that can make time and often professionals uh, help to come, help hard to overcome. And so when I read that, I thought that that would be a good way of describing what domestic violence is because some people may not even understand that they're in this situation uh, because we always think of things like this happening to other people. Um, and those who are involved in domestic violence also sometimes find it hard to accept the fact that they are actually in that situation. And so uh, let's just jump in on this. Did you know you were in an abusive or domestic violence situation? Did you, let's start with the eldest. Uh, come out of a uh, domestic violent home, you don't always realize that you are in a domestic violence thing, you know, don't always start off with uh, the violent part, you know. And it was more like, a, I would say, a verbal. It was more verbal ab abuse, you know, and it just graduated to, to got but worse, you know. Right. And uh, You said something, though. You said you were coming out of an uh, abusive violent home. Mm -hmm. So your mother... My yes. grandmother yes. was abused was by abused by my father. By your father. Mm -hmm. Physical abuse. Physical abuse. Fighting. Fighting. All knockdown blows, you know. And then, you know, you I don't know whether I came out of that to uh to to get away from it, you know, to get with out of the house or what, but it to me it was I was it was love, but that other person it wasn't and so it end up where it's a verbal thing you know it's the the name calling and uh, the put downs and the how old were you when you got with my father your abuser well I met him when I was 14 and we dated for two years and then we got married and so I married at a very early age at the age of 16 and he was how old? Um, when I met him, he was like 19. And you were 14. Mm hmm And, uh, but I mean, back then, you know, you didn't look at the age difference like they do today. You know, the, the, uh, the people often got right, with, right, yeah, right. often got with older people, right. you know. 
And but, so have you started early on? Well, not the first year or two, you know, it wasn't, wasn't so bad, you know, but as it goes, you know, and uh, being a cheater, and then, you know. Who the, being a cheater? He know. was. Okay, I don't want that to be my mom. Not my no. grandma. No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you said my dad, he was, uh, he was unfaithful. A, unfaithful, very unfaithful. Right. And uh, so he went on, you know, so when they're doing things outside the home, that means you got to, you become the uh, accused of things, you know, that you're not doing. And I always wanted my, from, speak from by myself, I always wanted to be a difference there. You know, I didn't want to bring my children up in where they uh, see and they can't say, well, well, mommy did that, you know. I never wanted that for my children. I was trying to live a, a clean life before my kids, you know, and so, yeah. And so, uh, Mary, did you realize you were in a... Uh, an abusive relationship? It was, well, it was, I guess, but um, not at first, because when um, they, the guy, man, <laughs> the abusive man, wants to um, make you feel like you're loved, so everything is like perfect at first, and then it's the where are you calling you constantly, just showing up out of nowhere, you know, <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, it was like, like, yeah. in the frozen section. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it, it was almost like that because yes. I used to work at a clothing store. We had pizza. Don't tell me this, he was behind. Wait, the wait, no, no, <laughs> okay. not quite. <laughs> but it almost felt like that because we had pizza this night and um, we had some left over. So I was taking it back to the kitchen. Well one of the customers just passing by said "Ooh, pizza I said would you like some no sooner than I said would you like some he pops up you always talking to me you know and I'm like what it was it was just it was crazy just passing by yeah <laughs> and it was you know it was nothing I wasn't doing anything but he would say things to me like you know we were watching a um, a nature um, show and they were talking about skinning animals. And so he says, that's what I'm going to do to you. Skinning animals? Like skinning them? Yes. Like pulling the skin off of them. And I looked at him like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> that just you know, came out of the blue. That just came out of the blue. But right. that's when it kind of started. That was and so, yeah. And it just kind of escalated. But, you know, he slapped me one time. And I'm like, okay, uh, this ain't right. You know? Yeah. And so... The next time, it was more of a, a, a fist fight and choking. And I was like, I ain't going to tell you what I said, but I, I'm not that was doing this. the Lord. I know. That I was no, this wasn't the before the Lord. Lord. It was. He <laughs> pulled over Mary out of the grave. <laughs> oh, Lord. But the next morning, I was on my way to work, and there was a policeman right there. So I just reported it, and they psh, went on back up there well, but the I, funny I, thing that I would like to say with most um, guys that want to abuse or probably women too they're bullies and so they do that to you and you are feeling like okay I, I can't do a whole lot mm -hmm. but if you rise up they shut down right. because when the police came mm -hmm. he was so timid I was like oh my gosh is that all I needed to do <laughs> So, so, so yours was more verbal abuse, mm -hmm. physical, physically abusive. What about you? Did you realize you were in an abusive relationship? And it, and and you can speak from, you know, because like boyfriend or whatever, uh, whatever. It, did you realize in the relationship that you were in an abusive relationship? Actually, I did only because of the fact that we grew up watching you get hit and things happening to you so I knew what I was in but it was still um, looking at that person like it won't always be this way kind of thing but I knew what I was in and knew what situation I was in but always trying to look for that silver lining like this won't ever be 
um, mm -hmm. this way. Uh, he'll get past it. I don't think I ever blame myself for what he did. Um, it was just like, yeah, you have some issues, but we're going to get through the issues type right, of thing. Right, right. So that's what it was for me. And, and you, uh, Pat, how about you? Did you realize you were? Not at first. Um, my situation is a lot different than theirs because when I grew up, I didn't grow up seeing that. My parents, if they had arguments, they never did it in front of us. So the first time when an incident happened to me, I'm like, what? where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. I remember going somewhere, and I, when I first met my abuser, I was 17. I just graduated from high school. And, I, and we were going somewhere, and I remember in the car, he said to me, don't talk. Let me do all the talking. You just stand there. And so I'm thinking, where is this coming from? And so when I tried to say something, that's when he hit me on the side of my face. He slapped you? Yeah. With open and hand? Open hand. Said, don't, don't say anything. We were still in the car. So I'm like, okay, this, this doesn't make any sense. So everything was really confusing because I knew I didn't grow up. So at the time, I didn't really see it as abuse. I'm like, but my thing is, well, where is this coming mm -hmm. from? So I said, okay, maybe he won't do this anymore. So I swept it under the rug. You was in love, wasn't you? Yes. You know, love is uh, um, blind. It's blind. blind child. It, it's really blind. And, 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 and we call it love sometimes, but it's, sometimes it's just an infatuation. And when you're young, you don't even know the difference between the, uh, what is con considered love and what is called, you know, because we think when we're with a person that, you know, we always have the starry eye forever and always. We, we never get with someone to break up. Mm -hmm. We always get with them to forever and always, the Prince Charming type thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think we confuse that love or that, uh, the, uh, what's the overprotectiveness. Uh, really, it's just an abusive way of, of, yeah. of controlling, controlling and isolating you. Exactly. Uh, and so that they can get away with what they're about to start doing, really. So they kind of isolate you. They don't want you talking to anybody else. They're overly jealous. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, yeah. and accusive right. of things that most of the time they're, they're doing, doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh, you was going to say that was Mary? yeah that that is what happened a lot of times they they accuse you of things that they're doing mm -hmm. and and hoping you know you're not doing the same thing but you know I didn't realize the the abuse to that point until I reported him and had to go to the police station mm -hmm. and so the um, policewoman that um, looked at me and you know was looking for you know things to Marks take pictures and of and all right. this stuff she was telling me all the different things and um and i was like you know just an eye opener and i was like oh my gosh really that he is one of you know he does that stuff and you know just it was it was just a, an eye opener, eye opener. for me for yeah to actually lay out the profile yes and that's why i think i read this in the beginning of the show because sometimes we don't realize the situation we're in because we don't even know what the profile is we don't know what to what, what classifies it as domestic violence mm -hmm. and so we we don't even know to say you know what because like you said that's I that's yeah. me mm -hmm. I'm being abused exactly. and so you was gonna say mom yeah, yeah. and sometimes you know <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when kids grow up in that kind of environment they're apt to go out and get uh, married to uh, somebody that abused them. A and Yeah, they go out and, and they do the same thing, you know. They go out and, and I thank God that my children that was in this kind of environment didn't stay in it like I did. I stayed How long in were you in? I was in it for almost 46 Don't years. Don't that sound like prison? How long were you in for? <laughs> Four to six years. <laughs> How long were you in for? How long? It, 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 because it, it's, it it's literally like that. It, it, it is. is like a prison sentence. Mm -hmm. and well, I, I was. And so when you get out, you know, you're like, well, you know, how much time did you I do? Was you free. I was free. I, I, I got out right away. I because was after by you. Yeah. Because I, you said the first real big knockdown drag out. That was it. I was went. Like, I went to the police the next day. He went. Um, they took him off, and when he came back to get his stuff, they were packed in at the door, and I left the next day, and I went on the other side of town. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was gone. Uh, and, and, and your uh, statement about generational yes, the, they, domestic violence is 
uh, a generation yeah, a generation of things. Follow mm -hmm. you being my mother. Mm -hmm. Your mother was abused yes. by my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Then my father abused you. Mm -hmm. And then I also married a man who abused me. Mm -hmm. And my daughter then took and yeah. found uh, a mate that would, or a, a significant other that abused her. Mm -hmm. And so it is what you see, you duplicate. That's right. Or you. I didn't see that. You though. didn't see that. And see, Pat said the same thing. She said she I didn't, didn't see, see that. No. Um, it's how, like long a vicious you, how long were you in? 19 and a half years. Wow. You're like me. We, we did some time. We did 19 17. and a half. Right. And you know, and I think back a lot of times, and it's like, the first thing people want to ask you, well, why? Why did you stay? Now, before any of this happened, I would always say, <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't stay. I would get out of there. I would do this, this, and this. But it's different. It's good. It, you know, people are quick to say what they're going to do <laughs> until you get in that situation. That's true. Yeah. And then when you get in that situation, it's a whole Another ball game That's because right. now you're focused on, I got to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got to stay alert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, we was, um, I was on, on Facebook and I saw something because this is Domestic Violence Month. There was something on Facebook where um, people, a person was soliciting for men to stand up for, uh, you know, to kind of let other men know that a hey, domestic violence against women is not right. You hear a lot of it from women, but you don't hear a lot of men no. say, hey, popping her in the face is not a good idea, or, or saying these words, you know, being derogatory towards her is not a good idea. And so there was a post that was shared on um, Facebook, and then there was this particular guy who made the comment, and this is just tag what you said, he made the comment that basically domestic violence, in so many words, Domestic violence, if it's done towards a woman, it is pretty much that woman's fault because she can just leave when she wants to. Now, normally, I don't go back and forth with people, but <laughs> I feel like this topic is a lot of people are ignorant yes. to domestic violence, and it's, it's such a sensitive subject, and so for people to take it lightly to say that, a woman who gets beat by a man deserves it because she could leave. They are not aware right. of, the, of the very women that they call queens, of the very women that have birthed them and created children by them. They're not aware of it because the first thing that a person or a man or female does against some, their victim is take them out emotionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where even if you felt like you wanted to go, you don't feel like you can go nowhere else because nobody else is going to want you. Exactly. Right. They, right. they totally kill your self-esteem. That's why, like, the, one of my biggest things is not allowing people to make me feel like I'm less than. Mm -hmm. You will never, that has been done to me by my father, by people I have dated, um, by an ex. It has been done to me, and so that's one of the first things I do not allow people to do. Right. One thing you will not tell me is I'm less than. I know who I am, right. you know? So I think, I think it's very insensitive to say that because people sometimes are just tormented beyond mm -hmm. and, it, and it, it requires conversations like this to make right. men who are insensitive um, to the topic and then allow other women to know that you don't have to be here. There are some survivors here and we can help walk you through right. it. Mm -hmm. right. I think too that uh, what we don't consider is that a lot of women that are with these abusers are emotionally tied right. you know and so you with love you always want to give another opportunity you always want to see him turn that corner you uh, he, he, you know because you, you it's not like a constant abuse you weighing the pros and the cons of the relationship you know well he does he 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 pays the bills he does this or whatever whatever and so you weigh and in your case mom back in your day where you said you know you had seven children and yeah. you felt like, where are you going to go with seven where kids? Where am I going to go? With, you know, with seven kids. It's not like you said, you, just you know. Running lay on somebody's couch. You can't right. do that. Yeah, not, not with seven And then them. after a while, they, they, your self-esteem is so low yes. to you're all, almost fearful of, of leaving. You're, you don't, um, you just don't jump up and run, you know. You, the weather's going to get better, you know. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, you know. But you go through a lot. Your self-esteem is they're standing on it. Right. You know they're using your self-esteem as a doormat. You know, and they and then they flaunt what they do 
the things that he did, he flaunted in my face, you know, the, the, the things that, you know, the odd woman would have probably shot him, but, you know, but that wasn't in my DNA. The, mm -mm. And, and this is the thing. I consider myself a strong woman and a boisterous person. I don't consider myself timid. But for me, my uh, significant other, my first husband, uh, wore me down. And he used, uh, and this is the thing, to everyone else, like I would say stuff like, I would never be with a man that did this. I would never, in the street, I was this, you know, I would never put up with no blah, blah, mm. blah, 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 whatever, whatever. In actuality, I was living all I said I would not put up with. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was faking it for the world, mm. and that's why when I left him, you know, people was like, well, how can you leave such a good man? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but because I never took a stand mm -hmm. during the times that I should have. Mm. And, you know, we, we the best cover-ups. Oh, yeah. cover up we are. We are. so well the ones yes. who are being abused yes you know now I, I have actually this eye here is a cloudy eye I call it my cloudy eye uh, because I was hitting this eye slapped with uh, you know a, an open hand but you know he was a, I, I was about a buck ten then where them days at she was little I was about a buck ten then <laughs> and uh, he's every bit of two something yeah. Six one, I'm four eleven and a half. So when he put his hand in my face hard like that, it it my eye I had to wear a bandage for like days because my 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 uh uh whatchamacallit, what's that thing called Nicole? Cornea. My cornea cornea was was ripped or torn. Oh, wow. And so now it this eye has just been deteriorating as far as the nerve in it and it's just gotten worse but God has graced me he's been allowing me to be able to see out of it Amen. Mm -hmm. and so uh, but that damage came from that so I'm carrying a, a wound or a scar from this previous hit and for, and really for nothing I don't even remember what it was I don't know what y'all were talking about but I was there and uh, I, I remember we was in Germany and it was one of my earliest memories as a child it's like you know you were born and then there's like a memory that's it for me I was you know I don't remember being born but I, I remember JR being born and then my next memory is that and I don't know what was going on I don't know what they were arguing about we was watching TV and my mom always took down to him I don't see that too much in her nowadays but she always took down <laughs> she took down to him you know she never really gave him a reason to do what he did but that particular day I watched him backhand or hit, uh, open hand slap my mom in the face and my brother was sitting on her lap and so he caught a piece of it too and in my mind I said to myself I don't know I guess if I was four so in my mind I'm thinking I don't know how that escalated to that but to me it was I felt immediately felt bad for my mom I know we were talking about something pertaining to the household, what to do pertaining to the household, something like that. But it like usually that. doesn't but take a lot. It's nothing. nothing. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and you know, we, we learn, like you said, I would take down, you learn how to try not to escalate it. You right. try to keep yeah. it calm. If that means, okay, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever you want, you know, whatever it takes to keep him from going there. But when they want to be violent towards you, they create. That's true. Yes, yeah. they don't need a the reason. Environment to hit, to push, to, to shove, push. To, to, to say the, the ugly words, don't let them want to go somewhere, mm -mm. and they don't want to hear your mouth about it, then they, they create, they create this, this moment of That's tension, right. fear, That's right. to silence you so that they can go and do whatever they want to do. Yeah. And so true. you was going to say And something. I think when that rage is there, there's nothing that you can do to calm it. With me, what I had to do when the rage was there, I had to, okay, Pat, it's time to brace yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to brace yourself because I didn't know what was coming. Didn't know if it was a word because I had physical, mental, and verbal abuse for wow. 19 and a half years, wow. all three. And, you know, and I look back sometimes and I just said today, I said a lot of people think that, you know, words are not damaging, but they are. That is a permanent scar. It is. You know, um, when you look at somebody that you're cut on their hand. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're going to heal. Mm -hmm. But when you look at somebody that's wounded by words, those go deep. And mm -hmm. they cut very deep. very deep. So I can remember many years walking and losing my identity. Mm 
Oh yeah. Because I was so yeah, numb. You're absolutely right. I was. It was like I was there, but I wasn't. Right. But I stayed up just long enough just to be able to muster up to take care of my daughters. But everything outside of that, mm -hmm. I was numb. Right. And some some numb. some women actually go into other abusive devices to cope. Yes. With yeah. you know yes. cope with the abuse. Yeah. You know um, your mother. Uh, my mom abuse, stuck it out. Uh, alcohol. Yes. yes. My um, mom stuck it out. She drank and drank and she stuck it out. And the day I said I do, my mom left my dad. And she never looked back. And she was stuck with the addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She drank to, to, to cope with the abuse and the, mm -hmm. and, and the, uh, the, the verbalizing physical abuse. And then when my mom got married at 16, uh, she yeah. left, but she was stuck with the coping mechanism, which was the alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And until the time that she uh, uh, died, she was still Yeah, she had just kind of like almost stopped when she, just before she died. Well, she, you know, she got burned in the fire. And um, when she got burned in the fire, she lived 10 days. And, oh. uh, but my mom went through, when I say a lot, she went through a lot. Wow. I mean, my dad almost killed her one day. Right before us, you know, he uh, had this, um, it was a steel ball with a spring on it. And she had worked two jobs, two full-time jobs. She was the elevator operator back then. And then when she would get off from that job, she would go to this uh, cafe and work into her clothing. And she came home from work. And my dad just started, started right in on her. And she told him, that. she said, I'm so tired of this. She says, I'm going to leave. And when she knows someone had got the words out of her mouth, and he hit her in the head. World Changes Tabernacle, led by Prophet Prathan Powell, is a word-based church committed to seeing you win. We're called to create a loving and caring community for all people and work together for justice and peace in our world. Recognizing that our spiritual journeys are all different, we strive to be respectful and inclusive concerning each individual's relationship with God. We believe that Christianity is a lifestyle and we're committed to teaching, learning, and living the Word of God. It's more than a song, more than a shout, more than a dance. Whether you're a committed follower of Christ or just curious about God, you are invited to visit with us. Give us a call or check out our website for more information or to see our sermon times. 